Um, hi and welcome everyone to this uh, last uh, seminar of this semester in the Urban Forests seminar series. This time we have a very great pleasure to invite Purabi Bose uh, to be our lecturer or presenter. Uh, she will give a presentation called Untaming Urban Forests, Wildlife and Indigenous Peoples, Mumbai's Array. And uh, Purabi Bose is a senior lecturer in forest policy at the Faculty of Forest Sciences at the Selyuvin Alnart. And uh, before uh, she gets to start, I just want to tell you a few words about um, the seminar series and who is organizing it. Uh, so bear with me. Um, yes, so uh, this series is organized by the Future Platforms, SLU Urban Futures and Future Forests. And we represent two of four future platforms at SLU whose um, mission is to promote transdisciplinary research, education and collaboration for a sustainable future, as well as to improve collaboration between researchers and society. And Future Forests then is a platform for transdisciplinary forest research, whereas uh, SLU Urban Futures is a platform for transdisciplinary research in sustainable urban development. And uh, if you're interested in urban forests as a theme, uh, then I would highly recommend you to go into our webpage, uh, www.slu.se slash urbanforests. Uh, because here we post all the previous seminars. I think there are three uh, seminars who, that you can watch uh, now, but there will soon be three other uh, from this uh, semester. And um, the series is running as a collaboration between us, uh, SLU Urban Futures and Future Forest since the fall of 2021. And we plan to continue also next semester. Uh, so a few reminders before we start is to uh, turn on, turn off your microphones when Farabi is speaking uh, and also a notification that we will film the presentation part of the meeting. We will not film uh, the question part or the discussions afterwards. So if you don't want to be seen or identified, keep your cameras and sound off. Uh, and uh, you can also always write your questions in the chat. Um, during uh, the seminar or afterwards. Uh, you can even take away your name. Uh, so that way you will never be seen. Uh, and with that, I uh, would say a big welcome to Purabi Bose and uh, I stop sharing. Thank you. Yes, looks perfect. Uh, you're on mute still, Prabhi. Prabhi, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now um, you can hear me clear and loud. <laughs> thank you for joining us. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to present uh, in this excellent platform. For the next 25 minutes, I'm going to talk about the city where I uh, grew up in India. It's called Mumbai. And uh, in, in uh, 2020, amid the uh, uh, raging uh, COVID-19 um, pandemic lockdown, I took a tough uh, decision to move, move out, of, um, out of my hometown, Mumbai, um, a city that I love for its uh, rich multicultural, uh, wide and linguistic and uh, cultural uh, ethnic diversity. And it's one of the, uh, to be honest, it's one of the uh, most safest city uh, in India for single women. So that's the city where uh, I moved out. And the reason to move and settle in a coastal paradise of Goa was very simple. Less pollution, uh, less population and uh, high green space. Um, but Nine months ago, I moved to 
uh, another uh, even greener uh, pasture, as they call it, uh, and that's Sweden. So, uh, which is my Loma, which is my current home, and uh, where I work as a senior lecturer in forest policy at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. One of the first presenter of this urban series, urban forest series, uh, Cecil Koningdijk, uh, spoke about uh, 330 and 300 rule. Primarily, it means primarily it means that in our urban communities, um, we should have access to a minimum of uh, three trees from every home, um, a thirty percent of tree canopy. Uh, in every uh, neighborhood and about uh, 300 meters from the nearest uh, park or green space. But what happens when the urban development engulfs a forest? And that sounds strange, right? Uh, there are many examples. Um, uh, for example, For example, the Kakura forest in Nairobi, which is one of the largest visited um, urban forests in the world, or, um, or the other city where I lived in uh, early 2000, uh, called Belém in um, Brazilian Amazon, has about 400 square kilometer of the forest. The question is, how do this type of urban forest uh, challenges um, urban landscape planners in their development uh, plans? In this presentation, I will touch upon um, uh, what citizens want, uh, whose perspective matters, why, uh, who wins, uh, does anyone lose? And in doing so, I will explore uh, what the concept of urban forest means for uh, lower, low middle income countries uh, and in the global south. So let me take you uh, to Mumbai's uh, urban forest RA. Now uh, in 19, uh, 86, during my school days, uh, the city um, was known as Bombay. My school used to, uh, my school used to have a yearly picnic day. And that was the only day in, in, in a year when student would be absent, when, when no, sorry, no student would be absent. And um, one such trip was to RA. We used to go to different uh, places in Mumbai. And the memories of, uh, of my school picnic to RA forest are, um, for example, touching the old tree and uh, what bird watching and drinking fresh milk from the dairy farm that is located uh, right in the middle of the city in this RA colony. So in uh, 2016, uh, 30 years later, I went to RA as a filmmaker and uh, to document the stories of people living in and around. And by then things have changed. The city has turned into a concrete jungle, as you would uh, imagine. And Mumbai is an, basically an ar archipelago of islands flanked by sea uh, on the east and west and a uh, national park on the north. It has about uh, 600 uh, square kilometers of land with about uh, 20 uh, million population and the interesting part is here that uh, the green space is estimated to be one square kilometer per person and about a total of 15 square kilometers of public green space in entire Mumbai city. Now today's presentation is based on the research work I did for uh, making a film about RA uh, urban forest and I began in late uh, 2016 when, uh, with the filmmaking until the COVID pandemic hit a uh, lockdown in uh, Mumbai in early 2020. As such, I would have loved to share the audio visual, video, uh, visual clips with you here in this presentation. But uh, what I'm going to present is uh, basically my research article uh, about the perceptions of uh, diverse stakeholders from forest department, municipal corporation, city group, citizens group, uh, cultural wing of uh, social movements, politicians, both ruling at that time and the opposition parties during uh, my field work time. The celebrities, uh, some of the Mumbai's uh, Bollywood celebrities that uh, gave their perception during, uh, during the filming, students, legal environmental uh, experts, and of course the indigenous people or Adivasis. 
Um, there are about 27 tribal hamlets um, inside the forest area of Are. So that makes it very unique. Now, um, the forest that is known as uh, the lung of the city is home to leopards and other wildlife biodiversity uh, coexisting with its original inhabitants, the ethnically diverse uh, indigenous people. So Ari forest, uh, as you would see in this map, um, is a rich, moist, uh, deciduous urban forest. And uh, it covers about roughly eight square kilometer in Mumbai's uh, Goregao region. And um, as you would no note in this map that it uh, acts as a buffer between the Sanjay Gandhi National Park and the city. And you would see that uh, Sanjay Gandhi National Park is being uh, bifurcated with the main uh, uh, into two zones because of the roads. So that's a uh, thing. A bit of history. The Are forest um, includes 12 villages um, in, that have about 27 uh, hamlets or paras as they call it in local language. And uh, the total inhabitation is uh, of uh, tribal community, indigenous people uh, is about 10,000 uh, who have been hunter gatherers. Uh, and now because of the change in, um, in economic and political scenario have become a sedentary farmers, but without any land rights, uh, which means that this 10,000 indigenous uh, people living inside the RA forest are vulnerable to be displaced and uh, rehabilitated anytime. So in 1949, uh, RA milk colony was established uh, to basically to revolutionize the processing and uh, marketing of dairy products in the, uh, in the city as RA colony. So the RA uh, milk colony occupies uh, roughly about 16 square kilometer of land of which um, 1.6 square kilometer is left open for uh, fodder, uh, for, for growing fodders and grasses. The land is also leased um, out to various organizations and institutions, uh, both for Maharashtra state government as well as uh, for the central uh, government in India. In 1979, uh, two square kilometer of land was carved out uh, from the village to establish what, what is known as the film city. Um, a lot of Bollywood films have been, uh, are being uh, shoot in that particular area of, uh, which is a film city. You see uh, from the history that the forest land has been reduced considerably over the years for urban development. Uh, the Indian, Indian government has uh, proposed major uh, construction projects in the recent years. And um, although the location as, as you remember, the location is in a very eco-sensitive uh, part of the forest. The interesting part is that the law uh, protecting the land was changed so that uh, the land could be developed for uh, commercial use. The largest uh, recent um, project included a metro car shed, uh, which was introduced uh, as a proposed uh, plan in early, in, in 2015-16 uh, and, and to provide uh, basically to provide a parking for a national rail service project. There was also a proposal for a residential project of 32-story uh, apartment for rich um, citizens uh, so that they can have an undivided uh, view of the forest area and uh, which would which would be housing about 8,000 people. And there's also a proposal that uh, the forest can, can have a zoo so that uh, the zoo, which is right now located in the city can be moved to this uh, forest area. So a citizen led protest um, has led to overturning the political move to build a Metro car shed. And this all happened in uh, the time when I started uh, filming uh, in Ari uh, a, uh, co colony and the Ari forest. So as a filmmaker, uh, it was a perfect timing, one would say, but uh, it, it's also a hard thing to, uh, to view something that was not, one was not expecting even as a filmmaker. So what happened? As a law and order in 2019, the Bombay High Court's uh, order uh, was to cut and then there was an overturn 
the, uh, the order not to cut 2,500 trees. And the order to cut and not to cut was, uh, has, has been a few days uh, gap in between. But this has led to a fragmentation uh, within Mumbai citizen. Some strongly against it, while many believe that uh, development of, of Mumbai city is uh, important and sacrificing 2,500 trees is, is not a, a big deal. In the process, RA Forest lost 1,500 trees that were already cut down by the uh, officials uh, despite the High Court order later. So it was not just trees. Uh, this is uh, the forest where urban planners in Mumbai who were pre-cutting the forest have at least, uh, they say 86 species of trees, uh, 22 species of birds. It is estimated that there are about 290 uh, species of wildlife in RA forest, uh, including five such uh, species of animal that feature in International Union for Conservation um, of Nature, and that is IUCN in brief. So this vulnerable animal includes uh, leopards, rusty spotted cats, uh, sambar deer, then alexandrine uh, parakeet, and red vatted lapsin. So in other words, those 1,500 trees in some way was habitat for uh, this rich biodiversity of flora and fauna, and of course the ecosystem of indigenous peoples. Findings from my uh, filming in RA Forest, I'm going to share with you um, how different stakeholders, near, nearby residential uh, communities and the indigenous communities living inside the RA um, view urban green space. What it means for different, different actors, different uh, citizens of, um, of, of Mumbai um, as the green space. And um, I interviewed over 100 individuals of different, uh, dif from different backgrounds, from different, uh, as different stakeholders. And uh, this has been audio video recorded, but I'm going to share uh, some, of the, uh, some of the narratives. So it's mostly what I'm going to present is the perceptions of those stakeholders in a qualitative um, uh, narrative format. So the first one is forest department, of course. Uh, that's the first one uh, to, uh, to who, who are directly involved. So the RA forest can only protect it, only be protected when the forest department takes control over it. That's that's the uh, that's the view of the forest department. So according to them, the uh, wildlife conservation is to be promoted to ensure uh, diversity and nature-based uh, tourism within the city can bring economic uh, gain. So the economic dimension played a very important part. We are trained uh, in forest management, just like uh, forest else, uh, elsewhere in the country and the city's forest should be flexible to make space for uh, development, especially in a city like Mumbai with a high population. Um, and the officers continue, we can create forest anywhere as a replacement for some space can be uh, taken from our uh, so basically what they are saying is a forest is a forest uh, anywhere you grow, it doesn't matter. Uh, so the perception to sacrifice the forest and the narrative of reforestation from the forest department was very strong. Then came the municipal corporation of Mumbai and uh, according to them that they follow the rules as, uh, as set by, by their decision makers. And uh, once again, the narrative was that the development is inevitable uh, in, in uh, Mumbai. So the trees uh, cut will be replaced in numbers uh, in other suitable uh, sites. Uh, we can also think of uh, replanting the same trees in other locations. It will not impact the green space. Instead, the green space will be spread equally in the city which gives easier access and also better to manage. So basically uh, the forest can be cut down and can be uh, regrown in other parts of the city um, as a trees. And that, that's, that, that kind of gives easy access to people. So the citizens group or environmental and the human rights uh, stakeholders 
they they have been the forefront in the entire uh, movement during this uh, during this period uh, where where they were protesting against the metro car shed to come up in the pari forest while it has been a major victory for the movement uh, to protect the city's forest cover from the concretization and the development so called development those at the forefront of the cause continued to struggle for justice because uh, there were cases against them about almost 29 of the environmental activists and it's still and some of it is still ongoing um, the cases were in relation to the protest they carried out uh, and attempts to stop the felling of the trees in october 2019 when the municipal corporation had initiated the process uh, following an order of bombay high court um, which had given the uh, go ahead uh, for for the same uh, for few for a few days gap and after that they uh, took uh, took re uh, changed the order saying that you cannot cut the trees but by then 1500 trees were already cut as i had mentioned earlier the other stakeholder the other interesting and very important stakeholder here is the cultural wing of the entire social movement and uh, with the support of the environmental activists the indigenous people who have been living inside the ra uh, colony um, uh, from the 25 hamlets uh, have began promoting their traditional uh, varli dance as you can see in this uh, slide uh, photograph uh, they have uh, their traditional music varli is a uh, one of the indigenous tribe but there are many uh, ethnic groups many different tribes uh, in this uh, in this uh, forest uh, so they promoted their traditional dance music art painting uh, songs and uh, traditional forest and farm food and this particular picture is from the location where i was screening my other film uh, on on uh, mining activities in india and after my uh, film presentation uh, the, this group had a chance to perform their show sure. so the photograph is from that particular um, location uh, so to the idea is basically that the indigenous communities of uh, ra forest were um, trying to reach out to diverse audience uh, basically to express that they uh, that their livelihood uh, and the symbiotic relationship means a lot to continue maintaining the forest the way it is and to uh, reach out to a wider audience they have been uh, using urban cultural spaces uh, such as uh, the one here uh, which are exclusive to uh, professional theater artists and performers so there is a real uh, this this entire process has uh, in, in the in the in the ra colony has pushed them to uh, rethink about about their own outreach uh, activities so uh, according to one of the um, adivasi or indigenous women from ra uh, she said the time is changing our indigenous identity is linked to ra forest the land has been diverted for various uh, developmental activities uh, began with the dairy farm then the film studios and then extending taking away land for extending the cities uh, for building roads and now they want to use it for uh, metro car and relocate uh, animal zoo here we are not against the development we are against uh, destroying uh, our habitat a habitat that provides our identity of coexisting with nature wildlife and that is an integral part of our culture that is art dance songs and it has been ignored so far uh moving to the another uh, important uh, stakeholder uh, for this uh, for this entire uh, aspect of urban green space in mumbai uh, where the students and the youth wings um, of of environmental protection and here they said that we as a student um, are protesting against the destruction of the uh, ra forest therefore we are here to express the opinion and uh, the save ra movement um, in the city is basically to uh, show that the youths have um, ha have have values towards the urban forest and that is uh, it's equally important for our well being and uh, one of the student uh, expressed that it's an excellent spot in the city to escape for wilderness and enjoy the nature um, without having to breathe the 
pollution in the city. Somewhere they were disappointed that the city planners, urban planners were uh, failing them to reduce the pollution while at the same time cutting down the trees that is already existing. So therefore they stood there against the, um, against the uh, destruction of the RA forest. Uh, one more, silly, uh, one more uh, stakeholders that we uh, had uh, interviewed uh, during this uh, process, and uh, and and they they are one of the key stakeholders in some way to promote um, the entire uh, entire RA forest um, in in the national level. So it's it's obvious that when Bollywood uh, film actors or uh, or theater personalities join any cause it doesn't go unnoticed. And thus, uh, when, when some celebrities joined, the, uh, joined us and uh, the environmental activist groups, the RA forest received media attention at a national level and, and not just in, uh, in, in uh, television, but in all forms of media. So it was a major rage that was happening. And um, at the time of my field work, at the same time, it was also an election period. So it was very strategic in many ways. So, so the question is why do uh, celebrities want to join and save the RA uh, forest or uh, and, and ensure urban green space? So one of the, uh, one of the, um, sorry. One of the, um, celebrities whom we interviewed, uh, I'll just uh, narrate what they mentioned. And it says, to me, RA forest is a unique urban forest in the world. It is a miniature form of what Indian forests have been. It is unique because no other cities in the world share green space with original inhabitants, the indigenous people, and over 300 wildlife species rich biodiversity that cannot be replaced. People cannot be rehabilitated, and trees cannot be regenerated as a forest. The urban trees in my neighborhood have been cut down to expand the road. I do not see any trees from my window or green space when I go walking. Therefore, I stand up to ensure the remaining green, urban green space of my city remains intact. I'm not revealing any name at this point or identity of uh, the interviewers primarily because um, then, I, then I have to uh, reveal for all. And because I'm not doing a audio video sharing, so I thought I'll just keep anonymous for, for this presentation. Um, but we have uh, filmed almost all the stakeholders uh, audio visual recording. Now moving to the other uh, stakeholders and that is the politicians. And this is some of, this is, this is an area where I have never dealt before, um, I've never, had uh, direct interaction with the with the uh, political parties. Uh, however, this um, while filming, it makes a difference because as a researcher, when you go to ask questions, it, it's kind of a different uh, scenario as compared to when you have a camera on hand and you go and ask politicians. They want to show how powerful they are and how committed they are for the uh, for, for the uh, for the urban green space. And, um, and so it was easy to kind of uh, reach out to them during this process. So I spoke to both ruling uh, at that time, the ruling party and the opposition party during that uh, period. So the ruling party faced an immense opposition from the environmental and human rights group, of course, for proposing a metro a car share. And we spoke to a couple of uh, elected members um, and, and their perspective was, I'll give you two perspectives of the politicians uh, of the ruling party at that time. So the first uh, was a male uh, elected um, candidate, um, a politician. And the, he was to say that we are here as a representation of our citizens. Metro uh, is being promoted in Min uh, India to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions and reduce the impact of flooding apart from cutting the time required uh, to commute from one part of the city to the other. So the metro car shed will only bring development to the city. And the second politician, a female, uh, she, she had to say that we have a high court order to cut the trees in RA. We promise that the protesters are wrong. We care about city's green space. The number of RA tree felling 
will be replaced by planting the double number of trees in the city. It is a common practice in urban cities of many countries to cut the trees uh, that hinder development. So uh, that's the narrative from, uh, from, from the politicians uh, who were in the ruling uh, party at that time. And to uh, talk about the politicians who were in the opposition in the, during this fieldwork period between 2016 and 2020, 2019, particularly for the uh, election happened in 2019. So the opposition were like urban green space cannot be achieved without the sustainable development. We stand by the residents of RA and the citizens of uh, citizens protesters group. And, uh, and, the, and the opposition party was very strong that the well-designed green space can promote social gatherings and improve social positions. But their main agenda was that RA forest should not be destroyed. And that, that, that's the two different stand we got. But uh, how does this uh, then, uh, then matter? Uh, and, and did the entire um, RA uh, urban forest uh, change uh, the, the political scenario of Mumbai? It could be, uh, one can say that, uh, because RA certainly um, had become one of the political agendas in the uh, upcoming election in 2019. So after the opposition party became the current ruling party of a series of steps were initiated. So basically the um, ruling party of that period uh, lost and the opposition party came into the power. So in uh, September, 2020, uh, the Maharashtra government, the state government uh, declared that one fifth of the RA colony, uh, which is approximately 200 hectares, um, should be uh, kept as a reserved forest. Uh, years later, in uh, June 2021, uh, the government increased the uh, increased another added another 50 hectares of RA forest as a reserved forest, so making it total about 250 hectares. And they also uh, suggested that it could be included as a part of adjoining national park, so the reserved uh, forest can become part of the adjoining. Sanjay Gandhi National Park. Now, this uh, strategy, uh, some uh, analysts would say that it's a kind of a um, it's kind of a way to compensate for the fifty hectares of um, for, uh, forest that they are proposing to build an underground tunnel through the national park. So, by taking the uh, by re by recognizing the RA forest as a reserve forest, it kind of compensates for uh, taking away 50 hectares of land from the, uh, from the uh, national park. It's one argument. While the others are also kind of questioning, like what about the four fifths of the land that has not been yet recognized as, an, as a reserve forest? Is it because uh, they want to keep, like the authorities want to keep it open for probably future development? We don't know. Now, uh, there's another dimension um, about this, uh, why the four-fifth of, uh, of, of the forest has not been uh, reserved, and that is from the uh, legal dimension. So uh, looking at the uh, legal environmental experts' uh, perspectives, um, as I mentioned that the High Court has passed uh, two judgments back to back within a week. And that was to cut the trees and then uh, to say not to cut the trees in the, uh, of 2,500 trees in the RA forest. So from one uh, legal environmental experts perspective, um, it says that uh, we, uh, we lack the legal definition uh, of what is urban forest. It means many things to uh, many stakeholders, um, urban forest, uh, leaves us open space uh, for law to interpret and analyze case-by-case uh, -case situations. So the concept of urban forest, um, especially in developing countries or for any cities that have uh, grown around the existing uh, forest with rich biodiversity and uh, indigenous people has not yet been developed um, as per the legal requirement, according to this uh, experts. Uh, perspective. So uh, some of the rules that existed related to urbanization and the green space in municipal corporations are continuing to be from the 19th century. 
uh, which do not hold much relevance to uh, today's uh, context, uh, the way the city has grown and, and has developed. So uh, coming to the last uh, stakeholder and a very uh, critical stakeholder of, of this entire case study is the indigenous people or the Adivasis as we call it in uh, India. Just a, kind, just a kind of a background that uh, indigenous people are, are not recognized uh, as indigenous people in India. So uh, they, although they are the original inhabitants, but uh, they are known as scheduled tribes, but not going into the uh, details. Uh, these are the original inhabitants who are living in, in the RA forest. And according to, uh, according to the indigenous people's perspective that it's, uh, the trees are part of their culture uh, as a family and, and as a family. So um, the authorities that have made several attempts to resettle uh, the Adivasis outside the forest area uh, was mainly in the name of wildlife conservation, that the wildlife conservation can be uh, protected in this uh, area if we can resettle the population, indigenous people outside the forest area from Mumbai. So on the other hand, uh, according to the indigenous uh, communities uh, perspective, uh, the authorities come to cut 2,500 trees at night. In our indigenous culture, even touching leaves at night is um, unacceptable because uh, as per their culture, the trees sleep at night. So uh, during the protest, we were stopped, beaten and, uh, and detained by the police. Uh, we were just trying to protect the city's green cover and our environment. So basically, uh, the corporation, the municipal corporations came at night to cut the 2,500 trees of which they managed 1,500, but, uh, or four, uh, and they were planning to transplant 461 trees from the area. Um, what, what, what finally the communities, indigenous communities, think in their, um, in their perception about urban green space is that um, urban green space plays a uh, very central and uh, to the physical and mental health and have a direct uh, connection to climate change uh, and related to air quality, flooding and um, urban heat uh, island challenges because Mumbai is an island uh, city. So uh, what happened in the COVID time and uh, a quick uh, reflection of um, of this photograph uh, kind of gives you a perspective of uh, how how Mumbai uh, looks like, and it's it doesn't require this picture says everything. It doesn't require any description. Uh, as you know, Mumbai is also Asia's largest slum, um, so uh, that that also kind of uh, signifies the uh, city's. Uh, cultural and uh, economic uh, diversity. So though the COVID-19 is not yet over, but one thing is uh, very clear, and that is uh, the status of our public health system. And uh, the, the most important aspect is that uh, it fails to recognize the value of urban forest and, uh, and its uh, significance for the well-being. So the pandemic also highlighted the fact that uh, access to green space remains uh, inequitable, which you can see from, uh, from this photograph and with uh, dis disproportionately uh, lower uh, tree cover and uh, green space um, in communities of economically uh, poor and, and minority, uh, minority groups. And especially for women, uh, the visitation rates uh, to national park was next to zero. So uh, there is an increasing need to kind of examine how trees, forest, and uh, urban space affect uh, the public health uh, and what strategies uh, lead to optimal and um, kind of uh, uh, equitable environmental access and health benefits. So this brings us to uh, rethink what we mean by urban forest. And, and this photograph, as you see, is, uh, is what is um, the RA forest uh, and, and the uh, city around the RA forest. 
and this is a normal view of uh, any part of the Mumbai city. And this, this tree is not from India or Mumbai, it's from Loma next to my office, so no confusions on that. But how do we define considering all relevant stakeholders' perception? How we define if we have to bring all the stakeholders' perception together about what urban green spaces and what urban forest mean? So to, to kind of sum up, um, basically the urban, uh, typically the understanding of urban planners, uh, policymakers and um, other authorities as we see in this uh, particular RA case study is that uh, to plant trees and, um, and, and, and uh, on the roadside, which is the typical way of, uh, of, um, of planning uh, urban forest in many, many cities uh, in India. And and uh, and to have green spaces in designated uh, parks and uh, open land. The diversity of trees and their significance remains less of a priority for the uh, for the planners and the decision makers, um, because it's more of ornamental plants rather than um, the plants that give value to uh, to the community to the society. And the third aspect that comes out is that the existing forest and their bio biodiversity in the metropolitan city have not yet found way to be integrated in the landscape planners. So um, um, before I go to the take home message, I would like to, uh, li like to quickly highlight that who are we missing? The real estate owners are the, are the one that we are missing. So the commercial value is being decided um, by them and they play a significant role in increasing in value of the urban forest. So they are the key stakeholders, the uh, real estate owners, which I didn't manage to interview uh, because uh, they are the one who benefit from cutting the forest, but they, I think, can also be used to promote urban forest for increasing the property value, if we can use them strategically. So a uh, quick, uh, I'm running out of my time, but uh, uh, what makes urban forest different from, uh, from the lower middle income uh, con countries of the global south? Uh, as in my introduction, I have mentioned my stay in Belém, a city had lots of fruit trees and people were um, using it just like in RA forest, uh, people continue to forage from the forest, uh, wild edible foods. So uh, people are part of the forest, they live in, and with and from the forest, and they are not visitors uh, for recreation, for example, in the global south. So on one hand, the forest have a, uh, the, the, uh, the forest have a human voice. On the other hand, uh, these people are no match um, for the economic power and the dynamics that happen at a macro level. So if I'm still optimistic, yes, uh, what is required is a better planning. So, Thank you for listening uh, to my presentation. And I'm looking forward to uh, learning from your perspective, from your uh, discipline, what do you mean by urban forest? And uh, what, is, what, what makes it eligible for urban forest? So thanks again for this organizing the talk and looking forward for a learning dialogue. Thank you.